see what's on the printer, how it's doing. A set of track pieces for the ski ride too. Need three runs, 12 track pieces each. This will be running all night. Two hours, 15 minutes to go. Looking good. So quiet running in this enclosure. Much better. Takes time to get set up like this. But a nice addition to my model room. Almost done. Isn't that pretty? Under a minute to go. And I can tell you, after having a failed print last night, due to a Windows update, I was feeding it with the Pronter face through my laptop. This is good to see. It's a good feeling with a print this size. When you succeed. 11 hours, 30 minutes. I ran it on the SD card, even though I set my Windows update for a 35 day delay. Let's take a look at them. Pretty handy door I set up for this. Have two magnets up top, two clips on the bottom. Got these 45 degree notches cut out to match these 45 degree aluminum clips. That lines up this way. Closes with magnets. Thing about it is, with a setup like this, it's a way smaller footprint versus a door. And then, which way do you have the door open? You're locked into that. So, like that. All clean looking parts. have these relatively cheap temporary LED lights they're uh, just running on three AAA batteries got some LED light strips coming I'm gonna put them up around in here facing that way on the inside of this wooden frame there's the magnets I have them Recessed into the furring strip frame. And here are the clips. So they just bend underneath, go about an inch in. Got two screws holding them on. So that drops into the notches I cut on the door that align it. So the edges line up and then the magnets line up. Okay, I gotta do that two more times for 36 track pieces. As with anything you do in this hobby, here are some tools I've gathered to process the parts after printing. It's taking them off the bed, um, cleaning them up. Won't be any cleanup on these parts, no supports or anything like that. This is a X-Acto knife with a flat blade. We're removing the parts off the table. I've taken a fine stone and lightly radius these corners to protect the print bed. Get a test strip off of there. And this 
nice um, skirt. So I put it, so I'm getting underneath it with this bevel. Just work under it just a little bit. real happy with this print quality looking at the edges you have inside and outside edges that it has to print nice sharp outside edges following all this geometry on these paddles other thing to look at is perimeters how it's uh, got the overlap to the top layer but it's not sm uh, smearing also the layers so how clean are the side layers the last thing I look at it's actually the first thing I pay attention to printing but the um, live Z setting how tight it's pressed down into the board the surface is going to run on the bottom of the rail so got it pretty tight on these prints nice smooth surface okay more runs I'll have my track then drilling all these track pieces with the number 44 drill bit 86 thou it's extended drill bit I bought for this these track pieces being longer it's not taking much out Pretty much just truing the hole up. Go into, feel it touch the bottom. Get a nice round hole. Nicer fit on that 14 gauge wire. Now, a little shop talk on why I'm drilling out my track pieces. This one has been drilled out using an 86 thou drill bit, number 44 drill bit. The tips measure 86, but all drills, the shank is slightly less, so it's an 85 thou shank. Here's a number uh, 45 drill bit, 82 thou diameter on the tip. It measures 81. So here's the go, no go part of using the end of the drill bit. Measures 85 thou, I said plastic shrinks. You can't get that through there. So it's less than 85 thousandths. Here's the 81 thou, and it's just like a fit with a little bit of drag. So it's bigger than 81 probably 82 or 83 because the 85 thou won't go in there it's tight the 14 gauge wire is 78 thousandths in diameter which means I have a nice four to five thousandths fit less than 85 by one or two at least one probably two so it's an 83 thou hole 81 has a little bit of drag. Here's a 78 thou wire. It even has a little bit of drag. So no play in my track. When I drill them out, nice accurate hole, use the 14 gauge 78 thou wire. Find it easier to straighten the wire versus individual pins I 
Also quicker to mark the wire and then cut it. Should be enough for the section I'm putting together, section of track. These are the last pieces for the first two prints. I did 12 track pieces on my print bed at a time. Printer's running. Got 12 more to do. I cut them just about a sixteenth of an inch short. Plenty of engagement, and then the tabs will bend over nicer. Doesn't take much. How much to heat it? Just about that much. Second and a half. You can feel them soften. And then wait for them to cool, take a set. Not quite enough on that one, but I'm going to go with it. I can feel that it's yielding. Another moment longer and you'll melt them. Kind of interesting timing of this. Better off staying a little bit on the shorter side with the flames. Okay. So my track pieces that I've printed so far put together. So there is two prints of 12 track pieces done. What's the saying? The proof is in the eating of the pudding. Won't be any breaking needed on this track. Try this with your track. See how much sag you get. How much you can bend it with the 55 thou 16 gauge wire. And have that free of a track before it's even run. Here's where I'm at printing my sled, my ski ride too. It's all in this box. It's kind of hard to believe it all fits in a box this size. Skis, center of the tunnel, frame, it's all here. Tunnel center, lots of printing. 118 hours worth of printing in this box. This is enough to build a roller, following the directions all the way down to the last thing is a track 
And then after that is the um, body parts and accessories. So I'm also tracking how much filament and the print time, which I'll share that in the next video.